Hi there, Trevor here. I'm going to go over setting up a Linux-based hypervisor on Ubuntu 2004 LTS. The hypervisor we're going to use is KVM. We're going to have QAMU for the desktop manager. We're also going to have the SSH server, PowerShell, a desktop interface, and at the end of it, we're going to install Cockpit for managing with a browser. So let's just get into it. So I have our Linux server here. I'm going to put in the name system administrator, put in the server's name, a username of administrator, and a password of password. But this is just for demonstration purposes. You'll obviously pick much better username passwords than what I'm going to do here. This is just simply for convenience. So now there are two things I want to install. I want to install the OpenSSH server and I want to install PowerShell because I install PowerShell on all my Linux systems for setup so that I can do things with PowerShell from in between Windows and Linux. It makes things a little bit easier for myself. After I have this all set up, we'll run the installer and we'll wait for the system to come back and then we'll continue on after that. So we're going to install our hypervisor now with the desktop. I do things in this order. Desktop, BNC, QEMU, KVM, and then cockpit. Just how I like to do it. Makes things easy. And then we'll just continue after that. My desktop of choice for this is XFCE4. It's lighter weight. It just makes things run a little smoother on VNC. So I'm going to install the desktop and then we'll get on to VNC. All right, so we're up. We have our desktop. It's using GDM3 for the Windows Manager, XFCE4 is the desktop. So we're going to go have a look, get some things set up. We see PowerShell, I'll add that to the favorites. We'll get Terminal, we'll add that to the favorites. And we'll keep on going here. So we're going to use X11 VNC for the VNC server of my choice. I like it. It's pretty lightweight. I don't really have any issues with it. I've had issues configuring Tiger VNC, uh, working with different uh, operating systems, having the VNC client connect to it. X11 has not given me really any issues with that. So that is why I chose it. So let's go ahead and install that. And then we install Xlum VNC Net Tools. All right, with that done, we're going to set up our password. Type in Xlum VNC store password. And remember, our password needs to be eight characters. I'm just going to use password for the purposes of this demonstration. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. And then we'll continue after that. So we're going to whitelist our firewall now. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to connect with SSH, VNC, or cockpit. So we're going to do a sudo ufw allow 22, 5900, and 9090 to allow those services to be able to run without them being blocked from the firewall. Okay, so we have VNC installed. We have our password configured. 
now we need to set up auto boot. Now there are some scripts and whatnot that will do the auto boot. My experience has been they work sometimes, sometimes they don't. Uh, for what I like to do to just keep it easy, uh, I set the primary uh, administrator account to auto login. Not the best security practice, uh, but if you need to set up something quickly, it's a good way to do. I will have some links in the description for some other ways to do the auto login. But this way works 100% of the time. So with the auto login configured, VNC should auto start. Once we get our auto start script up and going. So I like putting my auto start script in the cron.d directory. So you see here I have a vnc.sh script. And we'll just go over so I can show you it. We have our shebang line and then we have the launch for VNC where the password is and yeah that's basically it so another place you can put the script uh, the startup script is in the uh, you can put it in cron tab E you can also put it in the auto start here, but we'll just go over the cron tab E. You can see here I have an at reboot where the shell script is. So we're gonna go to applications, startup settings, and you can see here I also have it set up there. You don't need it in both places. I would, if you're going to put the desktop and everything and have it auto login, I put it in the startup applications. And we'll try connect. Make sure our VNC server is running. Oh, there it is. It's asking for a password. We just put in password. And we can see that it is working. So we'll reboot to make sure that the Server will come back up with VNC auto starting. Okay, here, so our server's coming up. Auto login. Let's bring up our tight VNC viewer and see if we can connect. And yes, we can. We're being prompt for a password. We put in our password and we're connected. So that's all well and good and working. So the next thing on our list is QEMU. So we want to use our app get update install and we're going to put in QEMU KVM libvirt daemon system libvirt clients and bridge utils. put in our password. I have a typo. Got to get rid of that dash by libvirt daemon. Okay, we want to install. This will take a minute. All right, our packages are installed. Now we're going to add the desktop client manager for QEMU. So we're doing app get install vert manager. And this will take a minute. Okay, so our virtual managers installed. 
We'll go to the applications. There it is right there, Virtual Machine Manager. We'll add that to our favorites. And you can see that the QEMU KVM is not connected. We'll need a reboot to get that up and going. So let's just go ahead and do that. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and install Cockpit first. So we'll use a uh, app get update or app get install cockpit dash y and that way then it gets all our dependency files. And we'll come back when that's installed. Okay, with cockpit installed, let's have a look and see what it looks like. I'm just going to bring up a browser here on my hypervisor. This is not local to the machine. I'm going to bring it down here and you can see we have a SSL certificate warning that this site is not secure. So let's go advanced, accept the risk and continue and we can see our server. So we'll log in with our login administrator and password is password. And we can see that we have our full access via web browser. Now we need to log, we need to install our plugin for cockpit so that we can manage our virtual machines. So we'll do app get install cockpit machine. And we make sure we put the Y to get all the dependencies. This will just take a minute. That's all done. So we'll go back in and log into our cockpit manager. And before we do that, we'll just restart. We need restart for bringing up the QEMU. We just decided to install cockpit first before we did that. Okay, so our server has finished rebooting. So let's bring up our browser, refreshed it, see it's all there, type in our administrator and password, and we can see here we now have a tab for managing our virtual machines. We can create them, we can manage them, import, whatever we need to do, and we can have a look here, we saw that our QEMU was not connected and now it is. So we can go ahead and create, set up, do whatever we need to for our virtual machines. And that is setting up a Linux hypervisor in a nutshell. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for content you'd like to see made up, please feel free to contact me. I'm at Trevor Tai on Twitter, Trevor Tai at optionkey.ca. You can find my blog and all written content for these videos on my blog in the description below.